Welcome to the Harper Classroom, a series of instructional videos. This video is on aggregate planning strategies with Excel. Aggregate planning also goes by production planning and sales and operations planning. All of these essentially have the same procedures, so I will collectively refer to them as aggregate planning. Some definitions of terms. The capacity that we will look at in this video is labor. There are other forms of capacity, but we will focus on labor. And productivity is our, is our production plan from our labor. So if our capacity and productivity are constant, and our demand decreases, then our inventory increases. So the relationship between capacity, productivity, inventory, and demand is what aggregate planning captures and uses to create very effective and very powerful aggregate planning strategies. Well, labor is defined as a full-time equivalent. So an FTE refers to a full-time equivalent worker. The relationship between labor and production is in the production standard. And the production standard we will use in this video is one FTE is 117 items per quarter, where the FTE is the labor and the 117 items is the output or the production. And notice there's a time related to it. So one quarterly FTE of 117 items, multiply that by four, and I have an annual production standard of 468 items per year. So one quarterly FTE can generate 117 items. One annual FTE can generate 468 items. Inventory. We will assume a beginning inventory of 7,020, and the relationship is our beginning inventory plus production, in whatever time interval we're looking at, minus our demand equals our ending inventory, expressed as this equation. So there's a relationship of our inventory. Now our capacity and productivity and inventory will be examined under three different strategies, chase demand, level capacity, and mixed. So, let's start with capacity and productivity. But let's do this in Excel. So let's bring in Excel. For Excel, I've already typed in the headings and the demand. So let's start with just summing the quarterly demand to get the annual demand. And the first strategy we'll look at Let's look at chase demand. A good description of a chase demand production plan is let the production equal the demand. Now this is just a description. Let's copy this down and then pull the sum over. So the annual sum, the annual production equals the annual demand. Remember our production standard is given to be 117 items per quarter. So let's copy that down to make sure that that's the same. And then our capacity, is our, which is FTE, is our production plan divided by production standard. So that equals our production plan divided by 117. I can copy that down for every quarter, and there's our capacity. So even though the production plan describes a chase demand strategy, the capacity defines a chase demand strategy. I can bring the sum across. And even though my production standard is 117 items per quarter, I see that my production standard is 468 items per year. So we can bring this annual production standard down. And so quarterly, our production standard is 117 items per quarter. Our annual production standard is 468 items per year. Well, if I sum all of our FTEs, we have 424 quarterly FTEs. But if I divide that by 4, then we have 106 annual FTEs. Well, for every quarterly FTE, we can produce 117 items per quarter. So let's come over here and delete this. And so our annual production then is going to equal 117 items per quarter times 424 quarterly FTEs. And there's our annual production. Or we can do it 
468 items per year times 106 annual FTEs. So we can see here that our that the variability in our demand for Chase demand will be reflected in our capacity. So the next strategy is level is level capacity. A good example of a level capacity production plan is the annual demand divided by four. So let's copy that down. And in Excel, all the relationships are here. So now we can see that the variability in our demand is not reflected in our capacity, which is a characteristic. The last strategy is a mixed strategy. Now the mixed strategy, uh, I want four values here that are not level and not chase. So let me just arbitrarily pick four quarterly production values. Well first let's start with 11934, uh, let's pick 14274, 10530, and 12870. Now those are arbitrary. I just picked those four. But I picked those four such that they were not level and not chase. So for this simple example, there's only one level plan, there's only one chase plan, but there can be many different mixed plans. Again, the relationships are all there in Excel. So we can see now that our capacity does reflect some of the variability of the demand. But it's not exactly the same as Chase Demand. So when we collect all three of these together, now we can see the characteristics of capacity and productivity between the Chase level and mixed strategies. Well, the variability in the demand for Chase Demand is reflected in the capacity. It's directly related. But for level capacity, there is no relationship. It's independent of the variability in the demand. For a mixed strategy, it's not the same as the Chase, and it's not, it's not independent like the level. It's something different. So now, Let's look at inventory. So let's bring in Excel. So for inventory, I've copied the headings and I've copied the demand and our beginning inventory of 7,020. So again, let's sum the demand. So here's our annual demand. And let's start with the chase demand strategy. And so for the chase demand strategy, if you recall, we'll just let the production equal our demand as a description of the chase demand. And we'll copy this over. Well, for our inventory, we start with beginning inventory. For the ending inventory, since our production and demand is the same, that's going to cancel out, and our ending inventory should equal our beginning inventory. Well, let's see. So the equation is equal our beginning inventory plus our production minus our demand equals our ending inventory. Then I copy that down. Now the ending inventory of quarter one will be the beginning inventory of quarter two. And then I'll copy that down. And again we see that the uh, beginning and ending inventory are the same for all quarters. And my average of all eight numbers to be safe is going to be 7,020. So for inventory for chase demand, notice that the inventory is independent of the variability in the demand. And it could be, it could be described as the chase demand can control inventory because it's independent of the, of the variability in the demand. So the chase has total control over the inventory. Our next strategy is level capacity. Well, the level capacity will be the annual demand divided by 4, and we copy that down. And all the relationships are still there uh, within Excel. 
Now we see the characteristic of for level capacity, the variability in the demand is reflected in the inventory levels. And so the inventory levels are directly related to that demand. And our average inventory is different. So the last is our mixed strategy. Now on this other tab, we've already seen what the mixed, let's use the same mixed production plan of these four. So let's uh, copy these, go to inventory, and let's paste. And so now we see that the variability in the demand is reflected in the inventory, but not, not the same as Chase, and it's not independent like level. It's something different, and the average inventory is also different. So, we can compare these. So when we look at the comparison of our inventory between Chase level and mixed, we can see that the variability in the demand is independent here for a Chase demand, but it's dependent for level capacity. And for mixed, it's not level or Chase, it's something different. But this time our average inventories are, are going to be different for each strategy. So this information between our capacity, productivity, and inventory is used to describe strategies, to define strategies, and also to create strategies. Well, that ends the Aggregate Planning Strategies with Excel video. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.